you know, and I think it's still that me and my community, not me and my community. Something happens to a creator as they get a bit bigger, they get a bit more successful. Uh, and it really stands in the way of them having long-term enduring success. And so today we're going to speak about what that kind of hidden force is. I actually had a really good chat with V Katavu last week um, and she describes this really, really well. So I'm going to borrow her help to, to explain this. Um, but my name is Danny. I run a company called Sixteenth and we help creators really fulfill their potential. Uh, and V is one of those people. So, so when we sat down, we were speaking about challenges that she's been facing or challenges that we see other creators facing. And, and that's when we really uh, touched on this, this force that, uh, that I'm talking about. And what it is, is that the thing that got you where you are as a creator is your audience and your community and your relationship with them. As you get more successful, as you, you grow, uh, further away from that that person you were when you first started building an audience the the very kind of proximity the very closeness that your audience felt to you starts to disappear uh, as you get bigger as a creator as you get more successful as your lifestyle starts to change you you can become less relatable uh, and, and and less of the person that the people that have been following you for that time less of that person that they came to see now V seems to be avoiding this really, really well. And so we sat down, I asked her about it. Uh, we'll, we'll cut to that clip now. So one thing that's, that strikes me there V is that like the, you spoke about like the audience celebrating when you're actually doing brand collabs and how that content, as you've said, like it can often outperform your, your normal organic content. Um, what do you think you've done to, to create an environment where your audience are actually pumped for you when you're doing brand deals versus um, sometimes I, I sense like almost a, a, a an element of shame uh, mm. from a creator when it comes to doing sponsored content. How, how, have, how have you approached that? What do you think you've done right? And what advice might you give other creators um, who want to create that same kind of celebration in their, in their community for them doing brand work? Well, like I said earlier, I began this whole journey by mistake out of anger, right? Wanting to go online and showcase myself at Oxford, being unapologetically a young black girl, born and raised in Zimbabwe, doing well and being questioning my institution to say, do better because young people deserve more. So as I went through that journey, I was so honest in sharing everything that was happening and everything I was seeing, whether it be at Oxford and being like, hey, this is what's in the personal statements or just general life. So when I began YouTube, I obviously wasn't super aware or clued up on the fact that this can become a job and this can become something that people live off. So when that first brand deal came in or that first check came in, I was talking about it like, guys, this is insane. Like I didn't even realize this could happen. And then they feel like, they are in it with you. So when that brand deal comes and I'm super honest, like, hey, you commenting and liking helps me with my work. And I would like, nothing is ever gonna be charged to you unless you obviously like the brand or whatever, but this is what I'm doing. They feel like they're in it with you. It's not something that's like, hey, I'm building this platform and I'll never ever do an ad. And then you sneak one in and they're like, hey, mm. it's all super, super, super transparent. A good example is last week I got some Crocs and I love Crocs and I would love to work <laughs> with Crocs. And instead of me just doing these subliminal like pictures and tagging them and just hoping that, no, right. no, no. Hey guys, I've made this real. I really want to work with Crocs. Can you go comment? Because they'll see and then we can work with them. They were all in the comments like, come on Crocs, get this, she'll be the best ambassador. So by the time that brand collab does come through, Crocs, if you're listening, let's go. Let's then go. they will be like, yes, like, <laughs> we did that you know like we made crocs cv and now v's work with crocs so what v is doing really well here and the lesson you can pull from this is the idea of treating your audience treating your community like participants the alternative would be to treat your audience as kind of like just fans observers uh, passive onlookers of your journey but what v is doing and what i'd encourage you to do is to to treat your community like active participants they're part of your journey like when you win they win uh when when also when they win you win it's like a they contribute to to your success they contribute to the journey they contribute to the progress uh, and what we so often see is creators just kind of getting too fancy too quickly and seeing seeing these new cool things as like a flex and just treating it like a flex and like there's nothing cool there's nothing fun there's nothing enjoyable for an, as a as a community member as an audience member watching that shit it's just it's just unattractive. It's, it's really, it's really not impressive. Uh, but you see it so, so often. V has like such self-awareness. She has such awareness of her community that she's. It's just not going to happen with her. Like she's, she, she speaks also about this idea of like um, uh, 
always being a fangirl like and i think it's the same thing it's like don't be too cool like don't don't detach yourself from from where you started and from where your community are because lots of your audience are still where you were when you started the other part is the fact that i none of this ever starts to feel normal to me right like mm. i was saying before we even began this podcast like oh my god danny we're doing a podcast this is so exciting i can't <laughs> believe you want to like chit chat with me you know like that's a genuine <laughs> feeling that i feel and i share that like people are sometimes scared to fangirl or to like be impressed by things everyone wants to act like ah oh, you know do you all sense me something this is normal no it's not like we're supposed to be paying for this stuff and a brand just sent it to me for free like that's crazy and i make sure that my audience know none of this is going over my head like i'm really this is crazy so then they feel like ah oh, they want to support so genuinely celebrating and letting people know hey I'm, I'm just as shocked as you are it, then it creates a sense of community where it's like oh man she gets it like she gets why we're also surprised by it because she's also surprised by it you know and i think it's still that me and my community not me and my community mm. Mm. yeah me and my community not me and my community i love that there's this crocs example that v talks about here and like i think this is so cool like this this is being very honest about guys i I'd, I'd find it so cool if i can work with this brand that i've loved for ages it's it's now it's now given the the uh community an opportunity to participate in that journey and so now if 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 they can be part of of v getting the crocs deal um then it becomes a whole like celebration and it reminds me of uh i think the, fir the very first brand deal that emma chamberlain did and like she was not small at the time but like you can see you can see in her response you can see in how cool she found it that it was a big deal to her like she wasn't taking the stuff for granted and and that goodwill that she then got from her audience is like it's still it's still alive and well today so as as v and i were talking it did occur to me okay this is all very well and good now now v like across platforms maybe has about four hundred thousand followers something like that which is great it's not four million and so what i wanted to ask her is like okay like her her going from a few thousand to now she's been good what's her plan though for going uh, from 400,000 to 4 million in terms of like followers like what's how is she going to maintain this same kind of integrity uh, this same kind of proximity close proximity to her audience as she does inevitably get bigger and I think she had a really good answer I think it's 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 in honesty right so as much as I can be excited about the fact that I've been set these crocs or being flown out let's not pretend that I couldn't have done that myself like I think being really really honest and saying hey everybody like since now we've just grown 10 times over it's harder for me to respond to the messages so I'm going to find a different way of trying to connect with you but not pretending as if oh I can reply to everybody every day because no you can't because things have grown now so I think always being as honest as I can be in where I'm at in my journey. So once you've entered a new space or a new level or something, let them know, hey, like this this means that I might not be able to do this thing anymore, but just, just be aware that I'm aware that things have changed. Because I think there's also the other side of it where you could have like, 2 million subscribers or something and you're trying to come on being like oh my god like, i'm gonna have to have a sandwich today and it's like like come on man like we know it you know it like the the check you've just collected is literally my annual salary like don't pretend so i think pretending as if this is like i'm still one of you right now no you're not but i still get it yes you do like there's there's a clear difference so i think i always stay honest like i mean the apartment i'm living right now is insane okay like this apartment is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen and i've never gone on the internet and been like oh my god like i've got to go and do and rent here because i just can't afford it no i can afford to be in this apartment and my audience know that and i would then scream and shout about it because i'm like this is where I'm at now. How amazing is this journey? And I always thank them as well because none of that would happen if they didn't support me. And they know what that means. They know that them supporting me means that I can now access things that I couldn't access before. And now I'm here. So let's talk about it. So I think even if in five years we were to hit a million or two million or whatever, let's 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 keep having those honest conversations. Cause I think things get blurry when people try to like gloss over things. So if I were to summarize what she's saying here, it's really about calling out the situation for what it is and naming it. 
because I think if you if you leave things unspoken, especially as a creator, I mean in life as well, but if you leave things unspoken, you have all of these eyeballs on you. People people are picking the stuff up, and then and then you're if you if you do leave it unspoken, you're leaving it up for interpretation, and you can't control that at all. Whereas if you if you take hold of the narrative and you call it out and you name it, damn, this thing's crazy. This apartment that I'm in now is crazy. Um, this trip that I'm going on is just crazy, and I'm and I and I'm acknowledging that. I think there's. It's, it's much easier to respect a creator if they're acknowledging it than if they um, they kind of ignore it because that can really that can really feel tone deaf for the audience members who have been there for the for the long haul. That those are those most important audience members that are really dedicated to you and your journey. By not naming it, it, off, it honestly feels disrespectful. Um, whereas by naming it, it feels like you're treating them like human beings and you're acknowledging the situation for what it is. And I think V, v I, I trust, will continue to do that um, for her next kind of 10x chapter. So I want you to, to, to consider this as as you grow on your creator journey, there is this force that's going to be creeping in, whether it has already, it is, it is going to creep in and it's going to, it's going to threaten your continued growth and your longevity because the thing that got you to where you are today, your relatability, your closeness to your audience, is naturally going to change as you succeed more. So, so look out for that. Just be conscious of it to begin with, and and perhaps take some of V's advice on how to overcome that distance. V is so so compelling. I was listening to these uh, these interview clips on the drive home just now, uh, as I was like getting gearing up to shoot this video, and it, I found it so so inspiring. She's so compelling. She's so smart. Um, so we're going to give away a couple of of copies of V's book. If you wanna win one, just leave a comment on, on, on the video below. If you have any examples of creators that you think have not done a great job of this or have done a really good job of this, I'd be really curious to know. So uh, leave a comment below and I'll check them out for sure. And we'll pick two winners within the first couple of weeks of uploading it. Um, I hope this has been useful. If you like these kind of creator strategy behind the scenes of the creator strategy videos, then uh, we've got a couple more. So I'll, I'll put some more on the screen right now. Um, in any case, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something from it. Have a good one. Bye.